Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to start working on logic functions, because right now we have an adder, pretty much, and that's it. But as we discussed in the AOU design video, we still need some logical functions for this AOU to work. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to start discussing how we can implement these. Now, we already discussed in the design video that we were going to somehow turn the adder into doing the logic functions. And the reason for that was, if we tried making some separate logic gate, like say we took these two wires, did a separate OR gate, and just fed that under, then at the end we decided which one we wanted. That's one way of doing it, but it's not an efficient way of doing it. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to somehow change the adder logic in order to get logical functions. And I think the most obvious place to start there is probably just getting rid of the carry line. Because if we're going to somehow feed data through this device and expect it to perform a logical function, well, think about it. When's the last time you've seen an OR gate for carry line? That's right, never. And there's a very good reason for that. ORs gate do not use carry lines. And if you try doing that, you're going to get horrendously screwed up results. So we're going to need some way of disabling the carry line so that it doesn't happen in some cases. And that might beg the question of, well, how can we do that? How can we make it so the carry line doesn't happen? And there's a lot of ways you can approach this, but I think the most straightforward way is taking it in terms of where the carry signal comes from. Because where, do, where does the carry signal come from? There's only one way you can get a carry signal, and that's this AND gate right here. If, and only if, one of these AND gates is producing a signal, is a carry line used. Otherwise, carry signal is never used. So, the easiest way to block off the, or not really block off, but just prevent the carry signal from ever happening, is simply disable this AND gate somehow. Set one of the two inputs to the AND gate to false. And that won't be particularly easy here, since this is one of the inputs, but on the other end, well, it won't be particularly easy here either, because that's part of the XNOR. What we can do, though, is we can just place a block here. And you notice, now no matter what, the AND gate will never ever be activated. And thus, the carry signal will never ever be activated. So if we can somehow block all these pistons, we'll get a cut carry. Now, you notice right here we can't do that, because that's also blocking that piston. We can, but we can still block it here. Nothing says we have to block it in the same place in both locations. So yeah, we have the two places we have to block it for our cut carry system. All we need now is we need pistons to control the blocks. So there's that piston. And for here, there's that piston. So here are our cut carry pistons. Nice, simple. All they'll do is I'll block off the AND gate, and therefore no carry signal will ever be generated. So yeah, simple enough. Now you just have to do that for every single bit. So yeah, pretty straightforward, if you can place the blocks right. And I think I'm going to just cut the video until I add the rest so you don't have to watch me, but you get the idea of how to do it, hopefully. Okay, I went ahead and added the rest of them. Hopefully you understand how to do that, and yeah. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a single wire to power all these pistons. And yeah. And notice that doing this alone doesn't change the adder at all. Having pistons right here, that doesn't change the adder logic. So right now, it still does addition. So that's part of the beauty of it. Right now, we haven't changed any of the actual logic of the device. Only when we flip the lever and activate all these pistons does it cut the carry. And only now does it change the logic. That means we still have our adder, but if we flip this lever, we've changed the logic. So right now it shouldn't be carrying. So if I flip this, it goes through like normal. So yeah, 1 plus 0 is 1. And then again, 1 plus 0 is 1. If I do 1 plus 1 though, you'll notice it gets me 0 again. And the reason for that is it didn't carry. There is no carry. And really, saying plus in this case is sort of misleading, because it's not doing that anymore. We've changed the logic. This is no longer addition to some other completely different logical device. And if you think about it, it's pretty obvious which one it is. If I flip this, it's on. 
if I that if I have nothing on, of course it's off. If I flip this, it's on, and when both are on, it's off. So this has created an XOR gate. So now we have an XOR gate. Well done. Nice and simple. So we have one of our fifteen logic that yeah, one out of our sixteen logic gates already finished. So yeah. There we go. So now, what if we wanted another logic gate, something that's not XOR? Well, here we have a bit of a problem, because using XOR alone, you can't do that. But there is this wonderful theorem called De Morgan's theorem, and part of that is that you can use any logic gate which has three outputs which are the same, and one output that's different, and by using some combination of inverting the inputs and inverting the outputs, you can get any other logic gate with those characteristics. That might seem a little bit weird, but let's start simple. I'll show you an example. So let's go over here, and let's build an OR gate. So, my repeaters, just so we don't have backflow. And yeah, OR gate. So you notice this fits that description. If it has three Im input combinations would produce one, and one input combination which produces zero. Nice and simple. So by De Morgan's theorem, we can get any other logic gate which has three inputs that are the same and one input that's different using that. So for example, another logic gate that does that is AND. And I can get an AND gate by inverting both inputs and inverting the output. And if you look, this does fit the description. Three inputs are zero, or three outputs are zero. And only if both inputs are on, is the output on. And this works for other combinations of implies gates and such, but yeah. That's essentially what it says. So we'll need some logic gate which has three outputs which are the same, and one output that's different. And you notice XOR has two outputs that are the same, and one output that's different, so XOR is not going to work. So we're going to need to somehow change this initial XNOR here, so that in one case, well, one of the cases where it would normally produce one, it produces the other. We need to invert only one of the cases. And that's a little bit tricky. However, we can take advantage of the fact that these pistons rely on pistons extending or retracting, really. If one of the pistons is always extended, so for example, let's say I just did this, you notice that would immediately change it to make that description. If I flip this one, you notice it retracts, yes. If I flip this one, you notice it can't retract because I have another source of power. And of course, if I flip both, it's back to the case again. So, we've essentially inverted one of the cases. And while we can't really easily do it right there, we can easily do it right here. I'll just need to block off these, and I'll need glowstone here so that that doesn't affect anything. But yeah. And you notice that will power that top piston, and this is the only case which will produce an output, a different output. Everything else produces that output, the output of 1 here, and in effect 0 here, since it's going through another XNOR. So yeah, now all we have to do is just do this for every single one, which is a little bit simpler, so I think I can just put this on camera. And yeah, so lock off all of these so that we don't have any influence. And again, the idea here is that if no power is here, it still doesn't change the logic at all, which this shouldn't do, but yeah. So there we go. If I flip this, there we go, we've changed the logic. And now we're doing one of the implies gates, specifically the converse implies gate. Because the only case where it's the inverse converse... Wait, no, this is converse non-implication, isn't it? Ah, I love that logic gate. So we're doing converse non-implication, I believe. If not, it's not particularly a big deal, the name isn't partic of particular importance. But yeah. So now we're doing converse non-implication. I'm just going to call it that because I love that name for logic gate. And yeah. 
And, again, if we just flip these off, we've gone back to doing addition. So now, 3 plus 1 is 4. So we haven't changed any of the initial logic. We just now have one wire, which makes it XOR. And if we flip that wire and this wire, then we're doing converse non-implication instead. And another thing to notice, we haven't actually changed any of the time it takes to compute. So, this is still two ticks. And yeah. So, hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. And in the next video, we're going to start working on implementing some of the other logic gates. We're going to take advantage of De Morgan's theorem so that we don't have to make 16 different wires to change it into all these different ways. So thank you, and I'll see you next time.